Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallowed be your name. And so we honor him today because he is king and he is his Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Praise the name of the Lord. And you'll find something that I have to make reference to today. Amen. Praise God. God is certainly a good God. Today I want to continue from where we started last week. Last week we looked at Gethsemane. In the comparison with the Garden of Gethsemane and the Garden of Still looking at the passage, we have read from it. Today I choose to speak to us on the topic, don't fight it, can't change it. Don't fight it, you can change it. That's the cup. It doesn't matter how much we run, it doesn't matter what we do. Don't fight it. You can't change it. Amen. Um, life has a way of just unfolding before us. And how it was designed, there are things that it just has to happen. Has to happen. Um, we'll put up some resistance at some point. At some point in the journey, we will discover that it makes no sense trying to fight it. You won't be able change it I read to you today from three different persons Matthew Mark Luke out of the three Luke is a physician And the physician has a way of seeing things that the ordinary man may not see it. And I think on the contrary that the ordinary man has a way of seeing things that the physician doesn't see it. So in Matthew chapter 26 verse 39 it reads thus. In Matthew 26 and verse 39. And how, this is how it reads. Did I say 36 or 26? Matthew 26 and verse 39. And it says here. And he went a little farther, fell on his face, prayed, saying, O oh my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou. That's much use expression How about Mark in Mark chapter 14 and verse 36 this is how Mark put it 14 and verse 36 what he says
And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. That's Mark expression. Then how is Dr. Luke putting it? Dr. Luke in the 22nd chapter and verse 42. This is how Dr. Luke put it. What he said. He said. Saying. Father. Because Mark said it in Amharic. Abba. Father. Now, Dr. Luke says, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine, let it be done. Don't fight it. You're going to wear yourself out. Don't fight it. You can't change it. And it's important for us today to come to that place to understand, understand that. You can't change it. I can change it. It has its course. Now, watch this, this man. Whatever we do, there must be measures of self-discipline. So the practice of self-discipline. Look what surrounds him. Look the temptation. What is before him. Now, most of us know the value of regular exercise. Good diet, kindness, relaxation, and breaking unhealthy habits. Our greatest single challenge in every area of self-improvement is transforming knowledge into action. As a lot of us, we get... Right? What? Into action. Turning what we know into what we actually do. Willpower is not a mysterious force that descends on us from above. Rather, it is an innate power within each of us waiting to be applied. So really and truly, when we say, well, I couldn't help it. Not, not true. We have the willpower. We have it. We don't use it when we should use it. But we have the willpower. Oh well. They make me do it. You see. I, I, I didn't have the strength to do it. I met sometime with a young. Um, a young man sometime. And he was giving me some stories. And stories. And sat with him and counseling him. And he was telling me Pastor King. See I don't have the strength to do it. To do what is, what is right. I took him on a little ride and I took him on a little test while we were sitting in the office. And after we spoke, I listened to him. I listened to him. Before he, he left, I said, before you left, you know, I was thinking about something. Your parents. I said, how about you and I organizing? And I am planning with you so that I can come by night. We can get rid of your parents. He said, no, 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 Pastor King. Uh, no. Said pause a while. You remember what you told me? A while ago you see you don't have the strength. The fact that you know that this is wrong. And you can stand up and say to me Pastor King. No, no, no. It is an indication that you have the willpower. Hello. 
We give in to a lot of things and we blame people, we blame circumstances and all of this. We have the willpower. What we have to do is apply it in the situation. Apply it. Yes, you can, somebody. My message is one of encouragement for you today. It is possible to be genuinely fulfilled in this life, regardless of the upheaval. It is possible without the use of man-made chemicals, medication, mood-altering substances. You know, there are some people that will take a set of things just to calm themselves down. Calm themselves. Calm themselves. I was looking at um, something the other day where a man who fought in, 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 um, in war, and he was making reference to that, that today his life, so he's going through all kind of counseling and taking medication because he has seen so many persons die. He have heard so many cries. And he said he has seen so many innocent children die. That the aftermath. And there are some people to have a calm day. They must take their medication and their tablets. I say, and yes, it's wrong. But you and I couldn't make it. God is still making a way for us. God is still at just a call and a prayer. So we have to come to that place to be able to understand this. Let me hasten to say that God has a plan. The plan that God has, it has three chapters. I call them three chapters. Chapter one is why. Chapter two is how. Chapter three is when. Why, how, when. Now just put yourself in Jesus' position because when we looked at it last week, we understood and we read it today that he took the disciples into the garden of Gethsemane and studies will show it was not the first time he went to Gethsemane. But this was a time when um, it was just about Jesus physically experiencing the nails, the spear, that's when he needed them most. God has a plan. This world was not just set and course. Robots are not the ones that are running and ruling this, this universe. God is still in charge of the world. He has a plan. And as we watch it unfold, somebody got to appreciate it and say, I know you are there. For some of us, it's not pleasant. And I always say to people, when the day comes and it doesn't work out the way you want it to work out, never say you had a bad day. Tell yourself it was a character building day. God has allowed me to go through this, to make out of me and to bring out the fragrance. Things happen. You and I are a part of the plan of God. For many of us, life seems like a puzzle with missing pieces. We're still searching. At some point, we ask ourselves the central question what is the purpose? Of my life. May I sound it loud this morning. For those of you asking. What is your purpose of your life? The purpose of life. Is to live a life of purpose. The purpose of life. Is above all. To matter. To count. 
to stand for something, to have made some difference that you leave that all so that persons, you left a legacy. You live your life on purpose. Tell you something. Something wearing very heavy on me um, these days. As I, as, I, as I follow the statistics, what is happening, coming from Banner House, as it relates to how pastors are living the ministry these days, and how some are going out of this. Pastor Thomas fought. Fought. And here is Pastor Thomas fighting for his life because it was diagnosed that the kidneys were failing. And he had to have dialysis twice Tuesdays. Man of prayer. I had to join his wife and himself. Because as the body became frail and weak. The devil was attacking him in the wee hours of the morning. She would hear her husband groaning. Groaning. I said to them, yes, the wee hours of the morning because he stood for right. Let me tell you this. Lion don't roll any at any time of the day. Lions roll at a particular time in the morning around the two o'clock. Two o'clock going to three o'clock. This is when most people die. Most of us spiritually, that's when we have the struggle when the devil chooses to come up against us. But just remember the devil is just like a roaring lion. Somebody who knows and trusts in the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah must be understanding, must be a warrior. Call upon the warrior in the wee hours and say, yes, you can make it. No. Oh. looked at his wife one day and he said to his wife Tomo I think you do all that you should have done helping me up to this point so I want you to enjoy your life next time he went low he didn't get back high until the resurrection will take had to bury him Pastor Maguire spoke to the church the night prior to his passing. Encouraging them, sent a voice note on the church's chart. In the wee hours of the morning, again. Oh. You're hearing me today? If we're grateful to the Lord this morning, you know. The fact that you could raise your right hand this morning, you better be thankful. There are some people in this life they cannot even raise the right hand. So if you can raise your right hand, you punch in the air and give the Lord some praise because you are God Almighty. Wonderful, wonderful Savior. Hello, somebody. And so when you look at a couple of things, it has to do with a number of things that are happening around us. As a, my, a pastor, my a short space of our pastor, Pastor Elfon was 
along with COVID and all of this, came out of COVID, not fully out of it yet to bury his wife because while he was there, his wife came in, passed out. There's so many of our pastors uh, within the Grenada district have been having some challenges in a number of areas. Our, our, our presiding bishop will have to leave um, the island in the month of January to go to seek medical attention um, somewhere overseas. And you hear <clears throat> this one and the other one and all of this, so on and, 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 and so, so forth. As I tell somebody, we, we have to appreciate. Yes, we have some pastors who play the fool and make stupidness and do all kind of things. But we have to appreciate persons who have com committed themselves to that. To do this for 25 years, 30 years, 35 years, 40 years, day in, day out. Amen. And still be relevant in a time when everything is changing and crumbling. It takes more than your intelligence. It takes brothers and sisters. The power that lies within you. The call that is hanging before you and saying, if I don't do it. Like Paul said, war is me if I preach not the gospel. Paul comfort himself. He said, I do this thing willingly. I have a reward. Somebody give him praise. If I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. Christianity is not in the pond, on the bench, Sunday save, Monday anyhow. Christianity is a lifestyle every single day, 24 7. Come on, somebody, 365 days. I'm a Christian. Seven is called oil, oil press. As you press, hello, somebody, to get the oil. Jesus was pressed in the garden. And he, 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 Jesus was pressed because he watched and he knew what was going to happen. Because he knew that there is a fellow called Peter. Are you hearing me somebody who was going to say I don't know this man are you hearing me he also knew of a Judas that sat at the table pushed his hand and Judas is going to sell him out for 30 pieces of silver are you hearing me and he sat there and he feels remember the last time I told you about the agony the agony of rejection Oh. Oh. He grown. Which one of us that have not grown? And we have been groaning. Are you hearing me? I didn't walk with it, but brothers and sisters, for the first time in my entire life, in my entire ministry, hey amen, I sat down one day with the pressures during, hey amen, the, 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 the pandemic. And for the first time, I wrote my prayers. It's on my desk at home. I remember praying and asking God, please, Father, strengthen me this once. Yes, brothers and sisters, because... You see, holiness has a price. If you decide to live holy, you've got to pay a price. It is not easy. You have to go through. Come on, somebody. You've got to go through it. But somebody got to see the God who made a promise. The God who made covenant. He is a covenant enabling God. He keeps covenant and he enables us to keep covenant. The test of suffering will tell. Here are a couple of questions. How genuine are you? Hello? How genuine are you? How serious are you? As a Christian. How much of a Christian are you? 
as against a fake. Is it real? No. You know, you have fake perfume, you have fake lotion. Oh my brothers and sisters, you are Christian and you are fake Christian. Hello? The test of suffering will tell. It will tell. I sat down there, you hearing me. And I should apologize for Desri. That's the second um, Sunday that after she finished play, pray, um, playing, she has to leave and go because I'm not there. So she, she leaves just after to go um, to pay attention um, to the wife. So let me apologize for her. It's not because she just play and leave and go. And I watch brothers and sisters during this period. And it seems as though that there are some things after you will think. Because the month of October made my wife 40 years as a school teacher in that profession. Happy to retire. Here is pre-retirement. And up comes pains and aches. I sat there sometimes and I watched my wife because sitting down become a problem. Then lying down becomes a problem. And how are you doing? And how are you feeling? Well. And then I watch one day. She took about six pillows. Put it on the bed. To make a certain height. And kneel down. As though she was praying. Because that's the best position. To lie down. To sit down is a problem. Isn't that sufficient to ask God, where are you? Oh, but when you understand life, brothers and sisters, hallelujah, hey, that you can fight it because you can change it to get the best out of it, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah, to get the butterfly out of it. It is a process that the caterpillar has to go through. And I believe that the best is yet to come because God in his wisdom them come on somebody he went that road he has been there he has done that and he's able to say to somebody I stand by your side oh God I feel like preaching this morning Matthew chapter 16 verses 24 he mean to 26 in the King James version he says then said Jesus unto his disciples if any man will come after me anybody ever see that verse let him deny himself do watch Take up the bitter cup and follow me. Verse 25. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake. Glory to God. He shall find it. For what is a man's profit? If he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul. Or what would a man give in exchange for his soul? So if you are going to follow him, take up your cross. It's not, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. It is not a KFC road. It is not a well-paved road. Christianity, as a matter of fact, you see, as a Christian, you have to stand up in certain place when everybody falls for it because of who you are. You got to say, I am not bowing, I am not taking part. This is not me.
Got to pay the devil knows who we're going to become. You think he's he just going to allow us to just become like that, just so? Just like some people in your neighborhood and some people in the world. They don't know your story. They don't see all that you go through. You hear me? They, they never knew when you used to go and sit down and take a piece of board and you took your clothes and you have it on the river stone and you start beating it and when you come out, you stand up in the river whole day. When you come out the river water, you have your foot and you can see cracks. Are you hearing me? She look white. But they haven't seen that. But you think they will sit down in the neighborhood because they knew who you are. Your family doesn't have a name because your family is not Puzzle and Banfield. So you think they're going to allow you to try everything in your way. But if somebody only know God in the midst of all of your opposition and everything else, you will tell yourself, I intend to reach the goal. That's why I started. There is greatness inside of me and nobody is going to stop it. I'm going to press forward. God is by my side. And as long as God is by my side and is leading me, I am going to succeed somebody confess it make a declaration I am not a loser I am a winner come on somebody declare it I am not the tail I am the head I am more than a conqueror to Christ who loves me come on somebody God said it I believe it it must come to pass up their nostrils. They didn't take them. Who is she? Watch where they came from. Hmm, glory to God. It's a good thing you know where you came from, but you don't know where you're going. Uh, come on, somebody. <laughs> but I have a good feeling that my landing is going to be nice. Oh, I feel like preaching. Then said Jesus, then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Too much of self. Too much self. I said too much self. We have to deny ourselves. And we have to take up the cross. Take your suffering. Stop the bawling. Organize in prayer. Prayed during the pandemic and I said, God, I feel alone in this wilderness. I stood up in a meeting that we had with my bishop and all the other pastors. I said, what? I said, I'm not at the helm today. But I said, is anybody going to stand up in this land and speak for the church? I said, if nobody's going to speak from that level, tell yourself, tell yourself, as a pastor, as a citizen, I'm going to rise up and I'm going to speak not on the behalf of religion and religious people. I'm going to speak on behalf of the blood wash, blood bots, church of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. We are not, we are not victims. We are victims. God is on our side. Somebody ought to praise him. Somebody ought to declare that you are king and besides you there is none other. Let the church be the church. Church praise him. Lift your voices and celebrate. Oh he made a way. He made a way and he's able to make another way for us. He's able to take us out. Oh, hallelujah. Don't try to change it. Don't fight it. You can't change it. Whosoever said is like, well, take your life. You see me, I'm so cute. And I ain't doing all that they're doing, all this praising God and doing whatever. I'm not like them. 
I'm a cute person. So you see me, I would just stay home and I would just keep quiet and be a nice boy and be a nice girl. See some nice boys and nice girls that are behind prison bars. See some nice boys and nice girls that are junkards and drug addicts. It was during this pandemic I had to say to the Lord again, I said, Lord, I'm willing to go through this even though it means dying because I'm a king and they are custom assassinating the kings. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Whosoever lose his life for my sake, glory to God, shall find it. Let's get into the why. Uh, who is the owner? Who owns this world? <laughs> oh God, sometimes I go down this side and you watch certain places and they say that person owned that. I go down um, liver and you look at sugar loaf and they said these people own this island. Who owns so, so, so. And I said, who owns it? <laughs> oh God, help us. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, our lives are not ours as we think. Oh no, we are tenants. God is the rightful owner. Let me tell you something that you never knew before. I'm going to tell you this morning. You see that house that looked pretty that you dress up this morning? Eh? You're a tenant, you. Rent your renting. Uh, tell your neighbor, rent your renting. <laughs> you could do what? Rent your renting this. When the owner ready, <laughs> he just pull out life. And this house just starts to crumble. And if you could hear it, you would hear the minister or the priest standing up and saying, dust to dust, ashes to ashes, earth to earth. What about this that you cannot submit it to the Lord and give the Lord all of it? That you're saying, Lord, let, let me just do what I want and you could get anything um, 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 sometime later. He who tries to save his life shall lose it. Brothers and sisters, circumstances may not be our choosing, but our attitude is all ours. The attitude we display in situations like these. Life is hard. You know why life is hard? Because it is real. No pain, no gain. So if we have to gain, we got to go through the pain. Hello? How? God knows how to get what he wants from each of us. Play tough. Play difficult. God has a way of allowing us sometimes to walk through a meal and he will squeeze it. And just after he squeezes it, are you hearing me? We start to cry, all right, all right, God, I am ready to submit. So he knows how to get it. Listen to me this morning, church. It's this part. The test is not one size fit all. In other words, your test may not be my test, but each of us have our own test to go through. Not one size fit all. Now, he, God, chooses what each of us go through. In this life, brothers and sisters, there is no cheating. You can't cheat. There is no past papers. So you can't go and say, let me look at it. was not, brothers and sisters, the exam was not your exam. So you cannot go and ask for the past papers. Let me see how Christians deal with trials and testing. There is no past paper. These days, it's easy with Google. 
There's no video of it. That you can sit down and watch how to deal with the problem. And you cannot Google it. So I'm going to Google um, how to deal with problems. And how to deal with tests that come my way as a Christian. You see, your experience, as against my experience, is unique. The only thing that is common to all of us is pain. Not the same suffering. I think it was last week I told you this. We said it before. Every one of us that came into the world, the special gift was given by the Almighty. Each of us have our own purpose. Based on your own purpose, the world is aware of that. And they will try to stop you in a particular area. You remember, as I told you, Aaron was the brother Moses. Aaron was only three years older than Moses. But he lived and were born in the same place. When Aaron was born, there was no alarm, no problem. Child was born, a male was born, no problem. The day the mother gave birth to Moses, the Bible said that the babe wept, the mother looked. And saw that the child was a goodly child. No problem with Aaron. But from now. We're going to look for Moses. We're going to kill him. So the decree went out. Go in every house. In every country. Where you see baby Moses. Kill him. If you don't know him. Every child that is born under that thing. Just kill them. That's because of Moses. Because he had a mission. He was supposed to be the deliverer. What is your mission? What is your purpose? And we have to understand that. Can I tell you brothers and sisters. There is nothing called future decision. All decisions are made in the moment. For the moment. Right where you are there. Right here now. With what you have done. Probably you had plans for today. But if you, you have to make a decision. It's for the moment. You might just be here. And if somebody come outside of the vehicle and say. You know that somebody fall homesick. You have to make a decision. Whether you go leave and go at the same time. Or you stay for the rest of the service. So there is nothing called future decision. All decision. So all of us are sitting and say. You see me? I made a decision. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. To turn away from the Lord. Until trouble meets you. When trouble meet us, then come and suffer. You know many persons who have said, I am going to serve the Lord, come at me. Nothing is going to cause me to turn my back on the Lord. We are there today. In the moment, for the moment. We never planned, brothers and sisters. Never planned. Never planned for COVID-19. COVID-19 came on the scene and we had to make a decision in the moment for the moment. Trying to make a permanent decision is like trying to eat once and for all. Waves keep rolling in. Circumstances change. And we have to come to the place where we would understand that very quickly. When? Today. Now, in this season, or tomorrow, and if it is not being experienced presently, it is on the way. Some problems in life, if you're not experiencing it now, it is on the way. Because God's purpose is to, is to fashion us. Watch those rough stones in the river. The constant beaching and the, and the river coming. Have a way of polishing it. Make them those stones. Hello. Today. Not experiencing any trouble. Here. Shouldn't take you by surprise. Some of them you call your best friends and they will call Jesus' best friend. Throw them 
of them. Hello? When he needed him, when he needed them most, that's when they deserted him. Hello? And could you imagine he sit down on the table eating with them, having the, what is called the last supper, and he said, Boy, this thing here, you see, I cannot, cannot eat this thing. Cannot eat this thing. Why? Because what is before me? In this life, sometimes when the pressure hits us, we cannot even eat. Just had to fall somewhere in the garden or somewhere in the knees and cry out and say, Oh God. Prayer. Very quickly. We talk about the cup. The cup. Brothers and sisters, the cup has to do with suffering. And with suffering, we either suffer for sin or we suffer for Christ. That suffering is bitter. Bitter agony of his passion and death. With all the grievous accompaniments. When you watch in Matthew chapter 20. I'm going to read the verse to you. Verse 22. Matthew 20 and 22 reads like this. But Jesus answered and said. You know not what you ask. As you are able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of. And be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. You want to follow me? Want to this? And there is a cup that you have to drink. A bitter cup. Suffering. Now the elements of suffering... In his case was exquisite torture. And I told you that when you are being tortured, it's not easy. So in Matthew 26 and verse 28, it reads thus. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. He went through this so that you and I could be forgiven of our sins. He could have played the nice boy. He could have played the nice boy. And let me say this. Some of us, some of the things that we are going through, we are going through for another generation, you know. You know, there are some people in this life, they are only able to cope with what they are dealing with presently. It is only because they would have talked, to, they would have spoken to you and I, and you would have said to them, I've been there, done. We extend our sympathy to the Colliers, brother and sister Collier. His son Sheldon hung himself. It's not the first time he attempted it. It's the fifth time and he's successful. Devil loose. Hello? Was he introduced to Christ? Yes. Prayed for. You could imagine the heart of the parents. At this point. We extend to you the colliers our sympathy. God strengthen you in this time. You know, there are some people look at you because you put on that dress this morning that nothing wrong with you. Everything is all right with you. But what you are going through and what you have been through, they have not even been through that. And if you tell them where you have been, they'll put their hand in the head and tear their hairs off. You mean you went through this? You going through this? Yes, but I, don't, I have learned not to scream. And make a show and walk with a long face. Are people to ask me? There's a particular guy in this community. We are good friends. Anytime you see problem, not hard for me to know. He walks down by my side because he looks, see me in the veranda, he walks down by my side and he comes down with the cutlass and he drops the cutlass and he stands up and he watches him. I will ask him. Why your face like this? A pastor. 
It's only because of you. you know, I know you're talking to me, but you know. <laughs> Hello? Such was the anguish that would have separated soul from body. Of such rigor that his sweat became, as it were, sweat drops of blood dropping down. Here is a comfort this morning, church, with what you are going through, even with the suffering that the Lord allowed to come here. The Lord has ministering angels that come alongside you and I during the moment to give us the strength to go through it because by ourselves we cannot this flesh cannot take pressure brothers and sisters but with the help of angels that come alongside us it's fast and when through that in his weak moment the Bible said angels came and ministered. The angel appeared from heaven to strengthen and support the fainting human life. What is the conclusion of the matter? We close. What is the conclusion of the matter? With all this? Nevertheless, in spite of that, notwithstanding, all the same, nevertheless, not as I will, but as the will, is the prayer. In this prayer, I shown the two wills of Christ, the human and the divine, the natural shrinking of the human soul from ignominy. You know that word, and I choose to put it many years. We were young in church. Don't underestimate people and seniority. We were young in church, still going to school. Think we're bright and brilliant. One morning, one elderly sister, those of you remember Sister Edna, frail old lady in the church, she got up and she was testifying. And when she was testifying, she said, you know, Jesus Christ died an ignominious death. Say what? Igno ignominious death coming from an old frail lady in the church. And all of us were left. They even show us, spell it properly, I drew it. Ignominious. Are you hearing me? To go home, we left and we had to go in the dictionary to check it then. And it simply means that Jesus Christ died a disgraceful death. Not like the others. He was, his death was disgraceful. They pluck his beard. Look what they did. Laid him on this. What did the Bible say? He could have called them legion. Did not hear him. Hear him. Nevertheless, all that I'm going through, not hello. Here is a here is a simple one. Here is a others, different. All the work you walk to do everything to build a two-story house, dream house, to build it. You're building it. Hello? You're building it. Hello? That's what we're doing it for you. Them. Look what you're going through. Pain or no pain, you're still getting up in the morning. You have to take um, Panadol. You have to take whatever. You drag yourself. Sometimes you sit down in the office and you're going through all your pains. While you're thinking about the mortgage. Sometimes you sit down and you watch people and when you see what they're eating, you have to just eat ordinary things because of this. To lose for who? Your children. But hear you as you go along. Nevertheless. 
that's in your action. Nevertheless, I want to make sure that when I depart this life, at least I left something with them. And Jesus, as he steer him, brothers and sisters, we were not kind to Jesus. But he looked at it as he watched the nail, as he saw the cross. Yes, as he saw the rejection, he said, Anyhow, it is not my will, but let your will be done, God, whatever it is. There was a time I used to sit down home with tweezers and take out all the white. I see the wife saying, Well, when you go, how long you continue with that? You're hearing me. Hmm? Sister Samuel is here. Pass sometimes see me because on Zoom, oh, you, you didn't even know that. A couple of times on Zoom, I had to make up a Zoom, look presentable. I had to put the fan close to me because I don't want the. Sweat for the thing to run. <laughs> you hear me, somebody? <laughs> Trying to cover those white ones. I, I, I hear me now, but I, I realize well, you don't make sense fighting the thing. So call me grandpa if you want now, but I, you, you don't. You understand what I'm saying, brothers and sisters? Don't fight. You can change it. Hallelujah. Amen. So I had to be tapping when I sweat. You see, this morning, I could do this other time. I had to tap and make sure. Are you hearing me? That you don't get messed up. Brothers and sisters, the truth is, don't fight certain realities in this life. You cannot change it. All you have to do is throw both hands in the air like Jesus and say, Father, if I had my way out, but anyhow, it is not my choosing. It is your choosing, and you are Father, you are Papa. I trust you. So let your will be done. I remember we, won. we had one of our former general bishop um, in the person of Tonner Nelson. And Tonner Nelson was, wait, what? Age past 60 and Tonner looking black. All around Tonner looking black. Some sister met him and she said to him, she said, um, God bless you, Reverend Tonner Nelson. And he, she said, um, she said, oh, um, oh, you look so good, man. You look so black at your age. And he looked at her and he said, he said, this is not natural blackness. He said, thank God. As you were talking, he said, thank God for the grace of dying. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you had to die that had it going. So you can change it, brothers and sisters. Many of us inside there wish we could reverse and change what is called old age. But vinegar, vinegar, where he come, you come in, you go see, you don't fight it, brothers and sisters. Don't try to find it. You can change it. Whatever you name, Vinny, you can't wear one of them, one of, one of those Vinny. Eh, brother, somebody. One of those Vinny. Finally, brothers and sisters, I share these two verses with you because it makes sense just to close this. What you have to go through in this, you have your lot to go through, you know. You have your lot to go through. Sometimes it comes furious. You have your lot to go through. Just tell yourself. Take this approach. By saying, Father, you are the rightful owner of my life. Everything. Leave it up to me. I will try to get out of it. But if you created me, loving Father, you know what you are doing. So, Lord, anyhow, not my will. But let your will 
Here are these two verses. You want to know why Jesus went through all that he went through all of this apart from trying to ransom our salvation? In the book of Hebrews, chapter 2 and verse 10, this is how it reads. Take note of that. He says, For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through what? Suffering. So to make him perfect through suffering. Chapter 5 and verse 8 says, Though he were a son, yet learn he obedience by the things which he suffered. And even though he was a son, he learned obedience by the things he suffered. And this is where God wants to take or doesn't bring you back to the to be to make us perfect through suffering. And to learn obedience to suffering. Many of us, we are humble today because of what we've been through. Look at a number of us. People look at us and they say, you really get macho. Long time. You flare up long time. You understand what I'm telling you? Nobody could have watched you too much. They just watch you when you're ready to, to fly on them, brothers and sisters. Thing that happening in your office now, when you were a girl... Uh, joke you're making man you're not talking about mother in days a mother you couldn't tell me that a fly in your throat but look how we're macho are you hearing me brother sister they couldn't tell you they couldn't do it because you're ready to give her a piece of your mind but look how you're macho because you have long suffering there is a mission all God is seeking to do is to get the best out the church I beg you the way because he's going to come some things are going to happen. Don't let it take you by surprise. No, as you feel the pains, as you feel the rejection, I want to say to you, just tell, to you, tell yourself, Father, anyhow, nevertheless, it's not my will. But Lord, let your will be done. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Stand with me, everybody. Stand with me. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. If you appreciate him, just lift your hands. Lift your hands to the Father. Lift your hands. The statistics prove that every single day, people like myself, they are living the ministry. Some of them, the families say that they cannot cope with the pressure that goes with ministry. And so for some cases, they had to leave. They had to do whatever. Oh, but we trust the Lord. We believe God. It's okay. Sister, brother, as you stand here today, you lift your hands. You know what you're going through. You did not even tell anybody. As a matter of fact, not even your best friend you have told. Never thought it was going to last this long. But it's tearing you apart. Look what Huzzy did. The wife did. That child that you had all great expectation. You hear some things today. And you cannot. My mother is tearing herself out. Because she said to me. Pastor King you have to come by. Because this boy that I give birth with. Now he's on the other side. And he wants me to accept it. And he feels that I am unfair. There's something eating you apart. And you're asking yourself, oh Lord, is this going to last? Somebody got to show your hands in the air this morning and say, God, you have a plan. I don't know how you're doing it, but you are master. So today, I submit to your will. Nevertheless, it is not
be done. Oh, thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Father. Bring healing. Mother. Bring healing to that father. Bring healing to that wife. Bring healing to that husband. Bring healing to that young lady. That is going through but doesn't even know how to tell mommy and how to tell daddy. I pray today God for that individual who has been going through. It seems to be overbearing but God just barely making it. We cry out. You are the king of kings. Those hands lifted to him. Hallelujah. You suffered pain. You suffer hunger. You suffer rejection. You suffer. Could you imagine Peter look at you and say, I don't even know the man. Judah sold you for 30 pieces of silver. You are beaten. They pluck out your bed. They take a crown of thorns, a fake crown, and put it on your head. Take as it were a pliers and push it down. Lord, you took the disciples to the garden expecting them to just watch with you for at least an hour because your time was at hand. They rejected you. you they, they fell asleep. Oh God. But you came by. You still did not curse them. You only said to them, couldn't you watch with me for an hour? And then, oh God, how might you recall upon you in the name of Jesus. But you did not even curse them. You say, all right. I've been through my period of agony. And he said, you can sleep on. Take your rest. Sister, rest yourself. No, brother, rest yourself. Don't fight up and fret up and, and blow up. Just rest yourself. Take your rest. Oh, there's some things. Don't fight it. You can't change it. Take your rest. Take this as I close. Some of the things that are happening to you physically, some of the physical sicknesses, it stem from emotional sickness. Some of you today, you need healing. Prayer is not going to work until you are able to bring healing to yourself emotionally. And that pain is going to leave. Rest now. Rest now, he said. Oh God, oh God. Come on, somebody, rest now, rest, rest, rest. You can go ahead and rest. I went through my period of agony. Yes, so. What you want, please, Booker? Rest now. I was expecting you during the hour. Flesh was weak and you fell through. I know that. I'm here to cuss you and to bash you. But I'm only asking you, man, what are you going through? Couldn't you just watch with me for one hour? Oh, but go ahead and sleep now. Take your rest now. Yes, yes, yes. I've received strength. Come on, somebody. Receive strength from the angels that are standing next to you this morning saying to you, can make Monday morning. Some of you wonder if you're going to make it this week. Yes, by the grace of God, you can. Angels are the spot standing. Yes, sir. To strengthen you and to encourage you. You can go back to your office ball like a I am tomorrow morning if the Lord spare your lives. Glory to God. And sing songs of praises. Hallelujah. I am not a loser. I am a winner. Somebody declare, 
I am healed by the power of the most high God. Mentally, I am well. Don't fight it. You can't change it. Accept it. Glory to God. Hoshama. Come on, I'm ready to pray for you, but fix yourself mentally. Fix yourself mentally. Fix yourself mentally. I'm about to pray for you. In the name of Jesus, glory to God. Fix yourself mentally. Come on, pay attention to your mental health. Let it go. Let it go. Just let it go. Now I'm going to pray because you let it go. Father, those cancerous cells, I pray against them today in the name of Jesus. You fall past it cancer, sugar diabetes, dislocated bones. Oh God Almighty, nerves that are pressed in the name of Jesus. We pray for the spinal area. We pray for the entire nervous system. You know where the pains are. In the news, you fall at righteous. We call you by name. You fall, sugar diabetes. Oh yes, God, we come against abnormal conditions. You fall, fibroids. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke you. Dry up from the root. You fall. Cease the Lord. Rebuke you. Now dry up. Oh God, we cry out. You said in your words, you are wounded. You are bruised by your stripes. We are here. We speak it over the house. In the name of Jesus, touch lower backs. Touch upper backs. Touch shoulders. Touch knees. Touch Touch bones, touch condition, oh God, there is a bombing blood. Somebody receive your heal. Somebody declare I'm healed. Somebody declare it's done. Somebody say, Lord, let your will be done. I am coming out. I'm coming out. I'm ready to face Monday. I'm ready to face this week. I'm a champion. I'm not a loser. Oh God, I'm a winner. Yes, I rise up. Oh God. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Oh God, those who sit in the dark and they plot, expose them. The battle is not ours. The battle is yours. Hallelujah. Fight our battles. We give it over. Some people in this audience today, they went through hell and back with the, the barrage. Oh God of negatives, but by your grace. We declare today. It's not our will. But let your will be done. Probably I'm the front burner in the stove. You know the front burner get more fire than the back burners. So Lord, if I'm the front burner in the stove, please, it is not my will, but you will be done. The fire will blaze, but it will go off at some point. All the accusations vindicate our cause. The lies, the malice, all the vindictiveness, all that was done. 
somebody feel marginalized somebody feel betrayed somebody feel oh god that the world was crumbling because that's the last of it somebody feel hated because they heard the venom submit accomplish your task that you will be done somebody clap your hands give the lord some praise